Welcome to Strange Familiars, covering a range of topics from the paranormal. Cryptids, mythology, the occult, hauntings, UFOs, weird history, and folklore. Wherever you are listening to Strange Familiars, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, or any other service, please subscribe and click the like button, and share the Strange Familiars pages and stories on Facebook and other social media. If you have experienced something strange, or if you know a story you would like us to cover, email strangefamiliarspodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash strangefamiliars. And of course you can always find us at strangefamiliars.com. Welcome to Strange Familiars, episode 29. Before we get on with the show, I just wanted to ask for your help. If you like what we do and you want to help us make more content, please consider becoming a patron. We don't have advertisers, grants, or sponsors. We only have our patrons. Go to patreon.com slash strangefamiliars and check it out. For $3 a month, you can get extra content, including full patron-only shows. We try to do one full patron-only show a month. And we give other bonuses whenever we can. There are other reward levels at Patreon for things like t-shirts, final stickers, books, and more. Again, that's patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. If you can afford a one-time donation and you want to help that way, of course, we'd be happy for that as well. You can drop me an email, strangefamiliarspodcast at gmail.com, and I can give you our PayPal information or, or other information for payments. As always, I want to thank all of our patrons for help. Making this show takes a lot of my time, and time is money. This episode, for instance, I drove almost two hours away to get the on-site sections recorded. That's an entire day away from other work and all the gas and other expenses that go with that. I enjoy doing this podcast, but it does have costs associated with it. If you enjoy listening and you can help us out, please do. Friday, March 16th, 2018, I met up with a listener and Bigfoot witness in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Jeff had a really intense encounter in Michaud State Forest, which you'll hear about. He was nice enough to take me out to the actual locations where these events happen. I had a great time. It was very intense being with a witness on site and having them explain what they saw and actually show me where the things happened. This has been one of my favorite episodes yet to put together. Michaud Forest is reportedly in the top 10 Bigfoot hotspots in the entire country. Considering everything I saw there, I'd have to agree with that. It's a really interesting day. I had a great time. If you've been listening to some of our past shows, you know we like to note a lot of similar things around these places of interest. Michaud was no exception. This is all in one relatively small geographic area. A few square miles, probably. So along with Bigfoot sightings, there are at least two iron furnaces, a historic blacksmith shop, multiple creeks, strange tree breaks, twists, and structures, including one tree that was actually twisted into a knot. You know, it was a sapling or something. It wasn't a huge tree, but it was twisted into an overhand knot. But the most interesting thing to me was another instance of these strange women in white associated with Bigfoot activity. 
We talked about that way back in the Witch Diggers episode, and then again with Aaron and Kelly in Don't Pet the Devil Monkey. Another thing I noticed as I was coming home, I took a different route than I took on the way out there, and right on the other side of the mountain from Michaud is the town of Arntsville, which has tons and tons of apple orchards and reports of Bigfoot activity in those orchards. But as I took this route home, past Arntsville, I started recognizing the names to all these towns. I was driving through one after another, and eventually it hit me that I was recognizing them because they were from my book, Bigfoot in Pennsylvania. So all these towns, you know, kind of cluster together right there, you know, somewhat near Michaud, have historical Bigfoot sightings associated with them as well as modern sightings. Jeff and I started in a small village called Pond Bank. All the areas we visited were probably maybe less than a mile as the crow flies from the areas of Jeff's sightings and other experiences. The interesting thing about Pond Bank is there's a ghost story associated with it known as the White Lady of Pond Bank. The wind was blowing really hard that day and during this segment, for some reason I didn't put my coat on, I was only wearing a sweatshirt. I was very cold. The wind was just blowing right through, just cutting right through my sweatshirt. There's a lot of extraneous noise going on. I don't think I was maybe fully there. I think I was shivering and worried about the recording because of the wind and so forth. But as I was editing it, I noticed something really strange in the background. So listen to what Jeff is saying, but also see if you notice anything else. And after this segment, I'll come back and talk some more about that. Okay. You want me to start? Or? Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. wanted to. Okay. So you see this pond, right? I mean, it's... What, man? Is that 100 yards across? Maybe. From right there? Okay, yeah. so 80? Yeah. Something like that? All right. Well, so this is more or less a retention pond, right? This is the pond that people claim to see or hear the white lady. So this is the white lady of Pond Bank. I think there was a film made about it, actually. Really? Or not. Oh, yeah. There's a horror film about it. I don't know if it's any good or not. But anyway, so the locals, they come here and they say at night, if you come to this pond, and, and, and it'll vary. Some people say you got to walk around the pond to the back in there and there's a lamppost. But otherwise, you come to this pond at night, okay? And at night, this place is black. I mean, it really is black. So you come here and you hold out a baby doll and you say, white lady, white lady, I've got your baby. Now, this is what the locals say verbatim. And supposedly, you will start to hear, now this varies, either a woman starting to scream or baby cries. <laughs> and you will start to see, supposedly, a white apparition. What people supposedly believe is a white apparition. Wow. Now, as a cryptid guy, I was like, well, wait, wait, uh, you know, okay, so there's a... A thing you say that sounds like a baby in the forest and it's white and or, or it sounds like a woman screaming and you're addressing it as paranormal but I was wondering if it might have been one of these cryptids that were just white and or gray or old in color that right. maybe just is reacting to the local idiots coming around doing this at you know midnight or 12 right. in the morning so I started thinking huh okay well you know if that's the case you know this doesn't look like much but I'm going to walk back up into the air or drive back into the areas and uh, see if I see anything interesting. And so that's what I did. But that's the story behind this. So as we go back up into the forest areas and I take you into my quote unquote cryptid encounters, I don't know if this white lady of Pond Bank is real or not. I, I haven't ever experienced it. People around here give it weight. People around here don't give it weight. Right. But when I had heard your episode, The Witch Diggers, and then don't pet the devil monkey it it really i heard don't pet the devil monkey first and i was listening to you interview that couple that had really no interest or awareness of the cryptid side of life of or not i i didn't think but once you had brought in and you were talking to somebody else i think you were co-hosting with about hey listen to this are you hearing this James, See how, yeah, yeah. hear how you're hear how they're talking about an apparition or a vision of a hag woman mm -hmm. You hear that and you and just listen to that. And it made me perk up a minute because it just seemed like a piece of that kind of odd information that people, I guess, that are into this stuff, you know, that, that you just cue in on. And when I heard it basically unfold that 
apparition and or sightings of old women or ghost women or hag women or whatever were associated with cryptid sightings, just that equation, I went, wait, what? And then to hear they had that, and then I got to thinking about this place of my own area that I had my encounters. Here, I had given no weight to this, but believe it or not, here's a big body of water, and people say there's a, a female apparition associated with it. And, and how far was your encounter from here? We'll drive back there. Um, Roughly. Gosh. It's, it's right back here in this ridge you see back behind this forest. Okay. It's back so. there a little bit. But as I say, this this big area right here with the sand company and this there's a big area right here that there's a huge salad bowl meadow in here with lots of little mountain hills and pockets of water and marsh and forest and and with that cliff, it's honestly a perfect storm. Mm -hmm. There's a little tiny animal farm over here that have miniature pigs, miniature horses, miniature goats, all that stuff. Okay, there's a uh, huge flocks of turkeys that roll through here. There's mm -hmm. tons of deer activity through here. I mean, there's the Appalachian Trail is not. So far we're talking there. mile or miles, not not even, not okay, not even, so. not okay. even. This whole area that they might uh, visit through, okay, uh, this area that I know is hot and active, and uh, that we could actively get announced into when we go up in there, is probably about a two mile area okay or maybe a mile and a half or whatever so but, within the area where you've had multiple experiences there is a white lady story pre -existing. absolutely yeah there is absolutely a pre-existing wow as well as other paranormal stuff right right sure but but at the same time specifically the white lady right that's what cued me in was a female wow yeah now that really i know we're talking about this pond bank and the cryptid but I just want to interject this. I know of another property, if you will, roughly the same circumference where someone has had two female apparition, full on apparition experiences and a cryptid experience. But it wasn't right after the other. Right. Like I thought, with, that's why I said, hey, I, I'm not trying to, you know, lead you down some trail here with, oh, uh, you know, these, these correlations. But it, honestly, I was like, well, wait a minute. Maybe it doesn't have to. And right, maybe yeah. there is something to it. And I'm telling you, this other person that I know, and I don't want to give their name or anything, that had these experiences has no interest in spiritual or uh, ghosts and or cryptid, mm -hmm. Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever you want to call it. But it was smaller. It fits more of the Alba Witch description. Oh wow! Huh. And it was along a tree, a tree line. I can tell you that story later, but or now if you like. But he had had a female apparition, and they had lived multiple, two different places on the same property. Mm -hmm. Okay, like an acre up or an eight, like on this five acre, according right. to that five acre, through different locations, different houses. But I think the apparition sighting here was attached to a, a chair. But it was a female. They think it was attached to a chair, but it was a female that happened. And then up in the old farmhouse where there was nothing, quote unquote, an object to be attached to. But there was an apparition, a female apparition right up there. Huh. Now, I don't know that they were old hags. Right. Well, but, it, yeah, it seems that it's more more haggy thing. But also you get this woman in white thing where people just say it was a woman in white, a woman in white. These were in white. So, yeah. And this white lady of Pond Bank you uh, research White Lady of Pond Bank, you will find information on it. I'm going to. And as I say, as far as the movie, I don't, now the locals, don't get me wrong, your locals around here, some really swear by it. Right. Some really well, will swear you for it. You know, and be like, every, yeah, right. Every local and legend everywhere. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. Now, I myself didn't give any weight to it. I didn't go out looking for the white. I was already looking for something else. Right. I, don't, I didn't want to cross-pollinate. Right anything else but i have known paranormal quote unquote researchers experiencers whatever that go out looking for paranormal activity and they get cryptid activity yep. in return and vice versa and vice versa yep. cryptid activity with paranormal activity in return yep. so there's that So another lady in white associated with an area that has cryptid sightings. That's really incredible. That's becoming something we're hearing more and more of. And maybe like Flannel Man, if we start talking about it more, 
more people come forward and and tell us more stories about this. So if you heard any other cases of this, or if you know any cases of these ladies in white associated with cryptid activity, please contact me. Okay, so as I'm editing the Pond Bank segment, I kept hearing this sound in the background. It's hard to catch because of the wind noise and talking, but to me it sounds like something or someone moaning or doing like a tube and throat singing or something in the background. I don't know what this was, and I didn't notice it while we were there. Like I said, I was concentrating on Jeff and getting the recording and trying to stay warm in the wind, but Jeff didn't notice it either. Whatever it was, I think it had to be fairly close to us, unless it's some kind of EVP or something. I was able to catch about one and a half seconds of it when we weren't talking and the wind wasn't blowing loudly on the recording. So I've isolated it, I've cleaned it up a bit, and I'll play it a few times in a row here. So I don't know what that is, but uh, to me it sounds very strange. And of course my mind goes right to Bigfoot, as that's where we were going out to talk about that day. It is very low in pitch, but again we didn't see anything, we didn't hear that at the time, so who knows. From Pond Bank we drove to an area where Jeff had a sighting of something He was kind of showing me as he was describing it, so if it's not clear on the recording, he saw something very large move from left to right in front of him as he and his friend pulled up. The area, whatever this was in, was like a little gully behind the parking area, so whatever he saw had to be large enough to be seen like above the the edges of that gully. And listen to the way Jeff describes how black the thing he saw was, and I believe he uses the term like an absence of light to describe it. I find this especially interesting because I've been talking to another Bigfoot witness who saw one of the creatures in Pennsylvania as well. He described it very much the same way. I think he said it was like almost impossibly black in color, just impossibly black. People used to dump debris here, all right, yard debris, things like that, all right, right here. And you you can see it everywhere. But I have a contact in my hand. I'm driving my old Ford. My friend Shane, or my friend is with me in the vehicle. We drive right up here. I have a contact. I go like this. I immediately, my eyes go right here into this little valley that you see, that channel of vision, all right? And we saw something black right through the, past the green spruce into the trees. And it was a line with a bump on it like that go. Huh. Like that. And as we were pulling in, I stopped and I went, did you see that? And he said, yes. And that's when I had said, what did you see? Where was it? And we, as I said, we were in the vehicle and we had pre-established the windshield in the middle to be 12 o'clock. And then to the right, it would be one, two, then three, and vice versa the other way with uh, 11, 10, 9 and stuff. So that way we wouldn't have to swivel our heads around if something was happening. So we had saw this and he, I said, what did you see? And he said, something black move over there. And I said, well, describe it. What did it look like? And uh, he said, I don't know what it looked like, but it was black. And as we talked about it, I mean, this thing was really absent of color, of light. And this was the morning time. Because we were doing, as I say, a uh, pre-recon research area so that it was the blackest night of the the month to to put audio and bait out so that we could get some activity. Or or to see if we would get activity because we would theoretically be two people just sitting in a vehicle and they would come up closer was the idea. Well, we ended up sitting here for a while and then leaving. that When we came back later that night or in the evening time to do this after the morning, after the sighting, we sat here and then we left, right? We left around 9, 10 at night. We left the audio out. The next morning I come and I come to retrieve the audio. And I'll show you my books where I would keep an audio log on when and what I would get activity. And it's usually rock clacks, you know, double pops, single pops, stuff like that. But you hear the footsteps too. But it's more of a scurrying, mm-hmm. as if somebody's scurrying through leaves. They're slow at first, and you can hear them lean branches out of the way to get to where this bait was. 
And then once they stay there a little while, you hear them scurry out. But other times when I've left audio in this area, they'll come up with no bait. They'll come up like literally to the audio. And it sounds like they're touching the audio. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's almost like they'll hang right around the audio for hours. One will sit there or, or something sitting there and it'll let the other ones know. And they'll do a click. Like they'll go pop and th with a rock or something. And then like you wait about 20, 30 seconds. And then like somewhere not too far away, you'll hear something hit a tree, like with a stick or a clap or, or something, or a double clack from back there. I'll go pop, pop, like soft and hard pop, pop. And then something else somewhere. Pop. We walked back into that area. And over here is where we saw the big, huge clutch of turkeys that was still in the uh, tree line because there was that other huge flock of turkeys that we drove up past that was in the road. So uh, just for the listeners, yeah. we, we are basically around the corner from that pond here. We, yes. Like, it wasn't even a three-minute drive, maybe, something like that. Yeah, it's blocks away. Yeah, yeah. Is, what it, is, is, is how I would... It was blocks away. So now you can see. Now, as I say, right past that oak tree. Okay. Like, right, like we could literally... Um, we can walk back there if you want, but it was literally right back there. And we looked back there. There's a huge dropping of rocks back this way where all these uh, turkey were. Back in this way is where uh, these turkeys were. We walked back there to see if we could see that black image that we had saw. And we didn't hear or see or smell anything. Nothing. I, was, I wanted to be careful and not go, oh, hey, we had a sighting. I don't know what that was, so I don't know what to call it. But... We did see that. So, just something black. Did it, it seemed like it was upright, as Le like it was leaning, leaning over. What I think it was, honestly, if I were to, it was a, a parallel. It was almost like a line, as if, 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 if it was, like a cryptid. It must have been something that was like hunched over, like you would see on the classic Boggy Creek movie posters right. where the adults running with the child like really bent over that way where you can't even see the back of the head hardly it just it just looks like a hump yes uh, but but pop, but just a teeny tiny bump on the end of it like uh, it was like a black line parallel with a teeny tiny bump on the end of it and it just glided I mean it was like this dipped down and then up and then glided and then gone wow gone I didn't see any arms no hands nothing like that I mean, you can see the foliage that's in the way and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But whatever it was, was big enough to be over that. And it was not a black bear lumbering off. No. I mean, I didn't hear anything. But this is one of the trees we put the bait on. You know, we would smear the peanut butter on a tree and leave a bunch of uh, ch uh, chum or bait right here. And then I would take a audio that was either in a bag or not in a bag, like a sandwich baggie with a zip tie, and leave it on one of these small birch branches. Mm -hmm. And I did this here, I did this right over here, and I did this over here. Because I wasn't sure which way they would come. But this right here, looking in the original direction where we had the sighting, is the shortest distance to breach this huge meadow area that has these small hills and marsh and ponds and things that go diagonally back to that pond so there's multiple water sources multiple visual sites that you could be seen from right or you know but right over here to our right is white rock and the towers and let's go over there all right Next, we went to the first of two locations where Jeff didn't see, but heard creatures. He heard them walking, he heard rock clacks, and in the second location, he heard a really terrifying roar. So we start in a boulder field in the woods. It's beneath the White Rocks cliff face in Michaud Forest. Okay. okay, so we're at the access site, right? There's the water towers, and then you can see up top the big rock cliff, and the whole thing will go up there. But you see right here? See those three? Oh yeah. See what that is? There are people that come dump here. There are people that dump the rest of the carcass of the deer here. Uh huh. I didn't know that. But there are people that do that. I don't know who does it, but they do it. Now, 
back here is where I did that bucket area idea where I had a bucket and I raked a bunch of area and stuff like that out. Because I see uh, the suspicious structures, what I would call suspicious anyway. Because as, as it might be, you know, I, I didn't ever go out looking for Bigfoot as such. You know, I was always just going out seeing if I could find the trace activity that other people would find. Right. And I started finding the things that people, other people are finding in different states all over. And I thought, oh my gosh, there's got to be something to this. But anyway, but this, in, but this encounter up here was quite unexpected. I mean, I, didn't kind of, I mean, they all are. Yeah, now when this happened, this was on like a Sunday or a Monday. Yeah, you can see the big rocks from here. Uh, we came up here. Here's my wife and I, the middle of the day, or, or late morning, 11.30, something like that, 12, maybe 1 in the afternoon, and uh, she had shorts on. What time of year was it? Uh, spring or summer. I believe I had just moved in with her, so it was that spring and summer. I think it was... So it was warm. Warmer. It was, I think it was uh, leaving spring, entering summer, because she had shorts on. But we came up here, right? So the locals, whenever they come here, they go this way. Now, this is all where my encounter happened. These, I see now they have these posted in the... Now, there's somebody that has a trailer. They don't worry about these. I'm, but, I'm not worried. But, uh, okay. These weren't here. None of this was here. But this, the locals will come here and access the trail this way. So we came up this direction. Oh, and there's a big rock. See, I would come through here, and at that time, I would see things in this tree that I thought were suspicious. And I mean, things like other people describe teepees, loops, stuff being pinned, but I was all unsure about it, and it was all inconclusive and arguable. And so we go this way. Let's take a good look around for a second. See these big rocks, man. Yeah, it's kind of a boulder field. Oh, my, well, yeah. In the, in the, it's wooded, though. I mean, it's... Oh, yeah, but see this rock face? Yeah. Sheer cliff. I can't tell you how many encounters I've heard. Well, I guess not still. I want two or three encounters, but where they've gone straight up these rocks. This was much shorter at that time. These smaller oaks or scrub oaks or whatever look at this right across the yeah. uh, this was much smaller at the time uh, so this was a lot there, it was a lot clearer in here right here is where my wife was laying focusing that way with the sun it was a little bit later than it is now she was sitting right there with the sun in her face I mean, was, you can see in the sky Tim right, it was right there Yeah. so it was early enough in the day it was right there I had a stick look at this Oh, wow. You know, I have to get a photo of that. Yeah. There was, I'm telling you, man, you will find weird stuff here. So I had a stick, a thin stick, and I was on one of these rocks right here, rapping on it like this. Like so, this. So not super loud and not, nope. Like that. And as I say, I just wanted to elicit activity. Well, anyway, I was doing that. We started to get footsteps, and it was in this direction. All right, and it was off in this direction. Now, you gotta understand, right before the footsteps happened, my wife is sitting here, okay? She gets off the rock. I'm over here tapping. I'm tapping away, right? She gets off the rock. She s sits down, like, right, takes her shorts down. She has to use the bathroom. We're the only ones out here. She sits, she squats down right there and goes pee. And, and the footsteps are happening, all right? I'm on the ground like this. She's on the squat and they're peeing. I do this, we get the footsteps. I go, oh, and I look back at her like this and I go, hear that, hear that? That's what I told you me and Skeet are going. That's what I keep telling you about, the footsteps. It sounds like they're dragging their feet through autumn leaves, like. I mean, it, that's, it sounds, it's like they're dragging their feet. Well, anyway, 
she lifts up. She's scared because she thinks there's people in the woods that are gonna maybe try to hurt us. And I keep telling her that's not what it is, but so anyway, I'm tapping back at it. Like, so I still keep tapping because I think in my head that if I keep doing this, it'll, it'll try to communicate with me, right? I had no idea. That's the kind of mindset I had at the time. I was so green. Well, anyway, from, so the footsteps are happening there. Simultaneously from up here, these rock clacks start happening from up there. Pow, 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 pow. I don't know what to do. I'm hearing the footsteps, Tim. I'm seeing the, the rock clacks happen. My wife is scared. She's stood up, zipped up her shorts and going, let's leave, let's leave. She's saying, this is all happening at the same time. And I'm like, well, wait, <laughs> this is the most activity I've ever gotten. Oh my gosh, wait, wait. You said that you knew these roads. Come on, let's go. You know, and she wasn't having it. And I had to leave because the only way she was going to come up here with me is if she could hold the keys to our vehicle. Wow. I swear to God. So, uh, and she, like I said, she's attractive, the whole thing, you know. Well, anyway, she's sitting here in those shorts, like I said, in those real high shorts that they wear. And anyway, she's already like, no, we're leaving, we're leaving. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. And the footsteps were going away from me, that direction, towards the pond. Or towards that meadow, or towards this side of the rock cliffs okay and uh, so I had to go with her we ran back down this fence right back to the access road that we came up right there and ran right back down to the vehicle jumped in she threw me the keys and or when I had gotten in the keys were already in or whatever we jumped in the vehicle we drove right around the road and I'm gonna drive you around right to where the right before where the sand company starts and you'll see I had, I was a smoker at that time. I had to smoke a cigarette and I was like, well, wait, wait, you know, I, let me smoke a cigarette. I, I got to process this. And the whole time I didn't even ask her this stuff the whole. And, and at the same time, she says it happened just like you said, Jeff, I swear to God, the rocks you've talked, the, the knocks you've talked about with the rocks that happened, the footsteps. I know I heard it. And I go in the moment of all of this, we're in the vehicle. And I say, well, then tell me, you know, you grew up in here. I'm not from here. I've only lived here 10 years. You say that you know everything in the woods and you've grown up here all your life. And well, what was that? What was walking away, you know, from us about 50 yards away that way? And what was up in the rocks up there clacking rocks? There was two of them. Okay. And then when we drive, we run back to the car, drive around this way. I stopped for a cigarette on the other side of this hill that we'll go to where this is remember this one's right up at the top and i think it watched us drive around this hill and when we stopped and i got out to smoke a cigarette i think it came down the hill in the direction we were okay you see what i'm saying yeah like they came down like something because so the opposite side the of, opposite side is where we're going to go yeah. the other side of this hill that we're looking at right but if you're in a car it feels like you've driven a little ways and you're out of the out of the area but you're not out of the area you're just on the other side of the hill right well anyway so i stopped to get out to smoke a cigarette like i said i smoked at the time and my wife is still in the vehicle she will not get out of this vehicle well i roll the windows down halfway so that i can talk to her the vehicle's off and i light a cigarette and i'm talking to her now as i said you i've told you before i didn't bring weapons in the forest i didn't bring trash in the forest i didn't leave anything in the forest none of that so I was smoking this cigarette and then for all of a sudden this roar, like, and I mean, it was a roar, like a lion's roar, roared at me. Roar! I mean, loud, blew through the forest. I felt like it blew through me, wow. man. I took that cigarette. I flicked it on the ground, got in that vehicle and I left. And the whole thing, my whole Bigfoot excitement, the whole excitement about the subject, it all changed that day, man. It all changed. I never thought I could get hurt doing this, you know, but as I continued later on through the years as they passed, and I guess it's been six years now, six or seven years now that this had happened there. Can I say Jim's name? Care. Yeah. 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 Jim King helped me understand that he thinks it's because nothing happened like the rock clacking might have upset one of them and it left right it wanted to get out of the area right but when my wife jumped down and urinated on the ground that's when that other one acted up that was high above mm. that's when that happened 
All right, like she was urinating and with a footstep and she got up like, no, oh, that sounds weird. But then all of a sudden the rock clock started happening. None of this happened until she got down and started really uh, urinating, you know. And so uh, he thinks it's because it was more, they might have seen it as a territorial marker. You know, I have no idea, but I hadn't have thought of that. But you hear about that happening in other uh, encounters yeah. where men will go out and urinate on trees or, or what they think is just a storm blow or whatever. Lo and behold, man, all of a sudden something starts happening to their campsite or their house or whatever. And, 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 and a lot of times I think it was because of the, the urination activates them, upset them, something. But that's pretty neat. There's all kinds of these anomalies. Yeah, so like, the, right below a, sort of a cliff face, kind of like I said, there's a boulder field in the woods. There's a path that leads this goes up there or goes uh, up. yeah I believe uh, that see I've always gone to the rock up from the other side as you go up here there's a little path that will climb you up into the rock okay so it does like switch backs or something up something like that yeah. but actually the, the easier way to get to the rock or the top is actually the other side of this hill and okay. you can walk right up but yeah curiously on this path there's uh, several down trees. There's. Like did you hear? Across the path. Did you catch that? Yeah, over there. Yeah. I heard something. I heard something fall. Or... Yeah, it might have been a, just something falling, but that was interesting. Yeah, I mean, you know, they could be wind blows, but there's there's several across the path. There's a the oddest thing is a tree tied in a knot, which I will take a picture of here in a minute. I mean, it is odd. It's like a loop. Yeah. It's like a, a loop, like the first half of tying a knot. Yeah. I mean, it could be, you know, people out here doing weird stuff, but I'm telling you, man, there's, there's, you start walking through here and looking to start to see how the... Let me get a picture of that. Just another note. I started with full batteries. Oh, are you zapping? It's down to... I have triple A's with me. I, I've got some too, but, okay. but I'm just saying... Just a heads up. Just, just, a, just a note. Full batteries down to down to one. Isn't that wild? And uh, over there by that pond, I bet you had zapped a bunch. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe, I maybe here. I don't know. From beneath the cliffs, we made our way up and around the mountain. Basically, we drove to the backside of those cliffs. In this section, we talk a little bit in the truck while we're driving, so there's some background noise of the truck there. Then we get out and walk through the woods in the area Jeff heard the roar came from. There's lots of dry leaves on the ground. I didn't know how much of that the recorder was picking up, so parts of that conversation are a little difficult to make out as we're walking around, but I don't think it's too bad. So this is All right, the. So we're parked. This is where I needed the cigarettes. So we came around the mountain, drove down this road, and it felt like we were out of the area when right. by the time we got here. Okay. So we pull off like this. I'm standing here, smoking a cigarette, looking in this direction. She's right there, right? The windows are halfway down, like they are in the vehicle now. I'm smoking a cigarette, and then from that direction. I'm sitting here like, oh, hey, you know, what do you think that was? And then this roar comes from that direction. I mean, it was so loud. 
and it blew through these trees and I felt like it, I mean it was so loud it made me stop I mean it, like freeze like I was like like you do when you're scared like that prey mm -hmm. freeze right like that's what happened I finally looked at my wife and her eyes were wide and whatever. And like I said, I didn't litter in the forest, but man, I, I just flicked that cigarette on the ground, got in this vehicle and took off right down this road. We're on the backside of that cliff. Yeah. So to speak. Yeah. You could walk straight forward that way and you would see them. Okay. But if you want, we should walk back in. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Grab my walk stick, I'm, I'm willing to. Yeah. yeah. Hunters around here will make these ground blinds. Right. You're not supposed to make ground blinds and touch or uh, mess with the forest like it's right, and right. stuff. But uh, there was one back here. I didn't know what it was at first, but I came back here and uh, I noticed there was probably six or eight trees around it in a circle that were all snapped down. And I knew it was a hunter's line because I saw a flat board in there and I also saw a uh, nope. camo tape. How did your wife react to that screen? She was frozen. She was frozen. Her eyes were wide, her pupils were tiny, and uh, she didn't say anything. In fact, I didn't say anything either. At first, uh, when it was just the rock plaques and the, and the walking, I was excited. When that roar came, and we stopped, and I had that cigarette, and the roar came. That's when it came. That's when everything came. I got scared. We didn't say anything all the way home. And, uh, and all of a sudden, it wasn't such a cool thing to talk about anymore. All of a sudden, it wasn't uh, fun to go do anymore. I didn't have any interest in the stuff anymore. I mean, I had interest in... in and that whole thing, but I was scared, man. I didn't think I could get hurt doing this, like I said. And once that happened, I thought, man, I can't protect. Now look, look at two archers. Both under that tree. Yeah, let me get some photos here, too. Sure. Yeah. Now, right here, you see these boulders with these rocks? I think this is the hunter's rock. That's where all the snaps were. See this snap? See this snap? Like, the, the tops of the trees are gone. Yeah. Right? Yeah, let me get a bunch of pictures here. Oh, yeah. I'll show you more right in this area. Remember what I said before about double loops? Yeah. You'll see these loops like this. Yeah, the rain like rainbow that. bends. And like look that. at this one over here. You know, like, if these are storm blows, like, you might be able to talk about some of this stuff. But when you start to really look at some of these quote unquote storm blows, Are there? Okay. Here, 30 and 232. There's a big one right there in the corner. And then further down, past Dead Woman's Hollow. Iron forges. Well, they were forges. I don't know what they were for, but okay. there was also a blacksmith shop right across. <laughs> so how, how Thaddeus far? Thaddeus Blacksmith Shop. It's, it's, it's right down the way. So it's a roughly... Five a minute. minutes on the road. Okay, road. okay. So close. I'll take you. So we're walking basically in the direction you heard that scream. Or yeah. how? Yeah. Roar. Yeah. Yes, and Roar. Roar. And the reason I contacted uh, Wes is because he always he kept asking people on his early shows, have you ever heard a roar? Have you heard a roar? And people would give him an answer like, oh, yeah, it screamed or it grunted or what have you. And I, 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 hear that bird. I really don't like that term grunt because it's like, what does that mean? A snort? Right. What is that? See these little loops? Yep. And, uh... So, but, so he kept asking people about a roar, and I and nobody would answer him. So I contacted him and I said, "Hey Wes, I've heard that roar you're talking about. It didn't sound like, I mean, it was not anything like a bear or anything like that. Man, it was like a roar, like a lion's roar. I've been, I mean, you know, when you're at the zoo or some kind of park where they have big cats and one of them does that growl rumble at the end, that that deep." Did you, you know, you can feel that, and uh, it's kind of like you can tell it's something powerful and deep. And this was powerful and deep, man. But that Boulder City, see that arch right there, that perfect looped-over arch right there? 
where am I? Um, Do you right there for? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like this? Yep. That's yep. a nice one. You'll see those in trees and trees. Just like the rock and just like the little stick patterns that are tied into the bigger patterns. I see them in twos and threes. Yeah. And it's the same pattern. It's not always an identical same pattern, but I mean it's the same patterns over and over. Right. You know? I'm holding back here a couple of different times on this side since all that went down. And it's actually uh, been with my friend, Barry, he would get knocks. Like a single knock from this area right here that we're walking into. We were back up that area walking to the boulder and we would get a knock. And a lot of times when I find these loops, there's a, these suckers are clean. I don't know why, but they are. Look at that, another tree popped on. But I mean, you know, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, that's that's the thing about tree breaks. It's like the, the, it's so inconclusive. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, part of it for me is quantity. When you go in an area like this and you just see so many, you, know, you have to go like, all right, how much? How oh. much is wind? Yeah, because there is some powerful wind that whips through here. Yeah. But then... See, this is twisted. Yeah. That's a, that, yeah. That's a See, little oh, one, yeah. but yeah. it's oh, yeah. No, I went this way. And if you look in the... I mean, where, there's the loop. Yeah. Right there. You know, it's broke this direction. This was the direction the roar came from. This is the direction. Like, look at this, watch. If you look at a lot of stuff, and the wind's blowing this way. Right. All right, but look how much is facing that way. Yeah. You know, it's facing the opposite direction of the wind break. And here's another bend. Oh, now this is good. Could be a fall here again, though, catching that. Yeah, but. But I'm, I'm telling you, man, I see a lot of this. Oh, look at this way. This is this way. Yeah. This is back this way. This comes through these. Yeah. And goes that That way. didn't break on that little. No, look at the twist. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it fell right here, here, look, there's, that's, that's the trunk side, right? All right. So let's do this. There's not a trunk there. There is one there. Yep. And it looks like it could have been that one, but look at it. Yeah. So people can see the way that's twisted back and then... Yeah. So there's two options here. Yeah. A person did it. Right. Or to start a blind. Or a person did not do it. Or a person did not do it. Yeah. It can either A, be classified in cryptid world as a haphazard TP. I mean, it works. <laughs> if we were archaeologists, we'd say, oh, it fits our timeline. But I mean, none of the, none of the logs are sawed. None of the sticks are sawed. They're all leaned up in the same direction. Right. Either somebody found deadfall and put it up there, or they didn't. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's two options with that. That's... Right. And that's why I was getting back to you earlier when I was so hyper talking. Roars. Oh. Roar. One roar. I haven't ever had a scream. I'm, I'm, st I'm, I'm speaking in general. In, oh, very in, good. In general terms. Oh, yes. Screams, roars, creepy feelings, stones being thrown. All of these are reported in homes in poltergeist activity. Okay. One of our listeners, and, and he was on an episode, Dave, he was on the Astral Sasquatch episode. And it okay. Got, it got very woo. Okay, yeah. Uh, at which I think Dave is, a, is unashamedly woo. That's and he, okay. And I'm going to say mean, he's won me over to... Own it. At least thinking more in that direction. If it uh, makes... If you can make sense of it... And it stands to reason. Why not? You know, Dave is now to the point where but, now a lot of people have said, like Josh Cutchin, for instance, said maybe these are just poltergeists in the woods. When you don't see a creature, maybe you're experiencing poltergeist activity in the woods. Mm -hmm. Even gave it a name, wilderness geist. Nice. Dave flips that. Dave flips it and says maybe people are experiencing Sasquatch activity in their home, and that's what the, the poltergeist stuff is. Well, I was going to tell you, remember the five acres of marsh next to my house? I mean, my house is 20 feet from a wood line, okay. a forest line, and there's a creek on the other side of that five acres. We have not lived there more than a year. When we first 
moved in there, we would be in the loft of my home, listening, watching TV, children are in bed. I would hear like what sounded like something hitting the side of the house, like a small rock, not like somebody slapping it or something, but like right. bigger than an acorn, but something hitting the back end of my house. Okay. This went on for a series of nights. Not a bunch of times, but a couple different times. Strong enough to where you could hear it. Then we had a knock on the front door. Like literally a like a knock. Right. Do, 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 real fast. And that was it. And it sounded like it was low on the door. No one was there. When was Nobody there. was there. I looked at my wife and I went, that's it. I'm looking. Because like I said, I've, I've had to step away from these type of subjects because I get very involved and very obsessed. So I grabbed my shotgun. It's racked, loaded. I'm in a new home. I have three children and my wife. I'm very protective. I have some sort of idea of what else can be in the woods. So I'm not taking any chances. I go out there. I have a flashlight in my hand. I have it at the end of the barrel like this. And I'm walking around. I'm talking out loud like, hey, man, if there's somebody out here, you need to chill out, you know. And uh, racked the gun so they could hear it or whatever. And uh, I couldn't find anything. Nothing, nowhere. And it was, it, the ground was still soft. Because it was uh, almost it was it was almost like it is now, where it's still a little cooler out, but the ground is softening up because right. spring is almost here. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of muddy. Looked in the grounds, didn't see boot prints, didn't see footprints, didn't see anybody's prints. I couldn't find anything. W- were you, uh, for lack of a better word, actively uh, squatching or, or looking for activity no. at this time? No, no, no so. not at all. I had stepped away from it. I had ended my show. As I told you, I had stopped talking to any of the contacts. I had worked very hard to con- to associate. It was taking me too much. I had, I had found my life again. Mm-hmm. You know, I had found happiness again, you know, and, and the more I had focused on it, it took me away from that. And, and that's what I did not want. Right. So though I have a huge love for this, I, I stopped. So no, I'm sorry. No. Yeah. The okay. answer is no. No, that's interesting because uh, I mean, you hear stories of knocks following people home. This 50 is the, miles this so, is the so same forth. area that I told you about before, where the gentleman had the two experiences with female apparitions, and then had the cryptid experience okay. on that piece of property on I that, talked that about back then. at the pond. Mm-hmm. That is the same property on a much other end, 288 acres away, where people say they've seen a bear, quote unquote, over there. The knocks happened over there. Little things happened, but that's but that's it. Nothing right. else. Right. Nothing that's else. Very interesting. Very very interesting though. And I can't help but think of they always follow the creeks, you know. Whenever I think that, because there is a little channel of shallow creeks that go through this property and back inevitably over to the where my new house is, and that's why. And there's a, a cow pasture on the other side of that creek, where you would find feed cows baby calves there are geese there's plenty of food right as well as houses and restaurants there's a couple rural restaurants out there with dumpsters and i mean i don't know yeah no that's interesting that's very interesting. but yeah maybe it's, it's uh i'm surprised at how often you poke somebody with that question and they come back with a little bit of information like you just gave me like oh yeah well there there was something weird at my house yeah. too you know it's just it's just interesting yeah, how and, often and that happens i mean in the back of my mind i was like oh man that that might have been cryptid maybe they knocked and jumped off you say they say that you can leap like that i don't know i didn't hear anything i didn't see anything i didn't smell anything i didn't find anything so i can't say that i i don't literally know what it was right you know and I live on a cul-de-sac, man. There's, as in one, two, three houses on my street. None of them have kids. They are, one is an elderly woman, the other is a disabled couple, and the other is a couple that just don't come outside. Yeah, and I'm sure it's not too different from York County over here. You, you, you don't want to be messing around with somebody's house at night. Absolutely <laughs> you're, you're, not. You're, you're going to get... Yeah. Uh, well, this is out of our actual borough distance and into the country a little bit and people will come i came outside with a gun right i'm from orlando florida i wasn't raised to just grab a gun and go search around the house i mean i was but not really Mm -hmm. you know but it was to the point where my wife was like yeah you know that's a good idea why don't you go ahead and grab the mossberg (laughs) rack one in it and grab your light and walk around our property but yeah i mean that's you you go mess with somebody's house rock salt in the ass would be best case scenario yeah you know so it, it just doesn't happen 
you know, after a while you just see the same old things, you know, and yeah, and they're fascinating for a very, very long time, at least they were for me, and I needed more, I needed more, and that's why, and I think it's the mystery, ultimately I think it's the mystery that I, that kept me going. Because boy, oh boy, I tell you what, once I got roared at, <laughs> I was done. What brought you back? I mean, obviously we're talking about it today. Well, I never stopped listening to the podcasts. I never stopped listening to the subject and finding out about the subject and finding out about our own local area. That's always held me and captivated me. And I've tried to, I take breaks. I'm, I'm actually able to take breaks from it now like my interest will break from it and I can focus on other things for a while. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good thing because it, you know, so I'm able to focus on my work more now and like I said, my family and all that, you know, I, I just really, you know, that's, you know, as I said, I got married and we started having children after this big experience happened and so, you know, I, I ultimately, the more I learned, the more I knew that they could be in danger getting involved with this type of stuff, you know, going in the woods and things like that, so, with this stuff around, so I didn't want to endanger them, and uh, it ruined the woods for me for a while, you know, it really did, That's uh... because it would happen when my family and I were out camping or something, you know, we, I would get, I would hear activity and see things that I know is them, and it makes me uncomfortable because my children are here, and yeah. my wife are here, and, you know. And so far, I haven't had anything intense, right? So, But what, what I've experienced so far has been, been uh, mild in comparison. And super neat, I'm sure. And yeah. Super cool and But my, my big fear is that that would happen to me because... I mean, I just love hiking. I love like. Oh yeah. What I, I I love being out here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Me too. And if that ever uh, was taken away, it'd be a very sad day for me. Yeah. Deer skull bonanza today. Mm-hmm. I want to thank Jeff for meeting me and taking me around to those locations and show me everything he showed me. Had a great day. He had an appointment in the afternoon, so we parted ways. I went to check out the iron furnaces at an area called Dead Woman's Hollow, which patrons got to hear about on a Patreon episode. I think we're going to be going back to Michaud in the future for further investigations. Thanks for listening, everybody. And if you've seen something strange, if you've had an encounter with the paranormal or something unexplainable, please email me, strangefamiliarspodcast at gmail.com. Strange Familiars is a production of Dark Holler Arts. Music, books, art, podcasts, and more. Darkhollerarts.com If you're on Facebook, check out the Strange Familiars Gathering Facebook group. Join and share stories, creations, interact with other listeners, and more. Intro and background music is by Stonebreath. Go to stonebreath.bandcamp.com for more.
be seen where the wolves go to lay down their hands and die. Where do they go under skies of Where the grows go to fold up their wings. 